Welcome back to the Keeping It Real with KC podcast. I, of course, am your host, KC Phoenix. And yeah, I haven't done a news story in forever. I've been doing a lot of tarot readings, which for those who may not know, I switched everything around where it used to be 75% news stories and other stuff and 25% tarot readings. But now is 75% tarot readings and 25% news stories and other stuff. So here we are with the news story. Before I go any further, KIRWKC.com, main podcasting platform. This podcast is carried on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Overcast, Bullhorn, Amazon Music, Audible, and several other podcasting platforms. Please feel free to listen to this podcast on whatever platform is most convenient for you. K-I-R-W-K-C on all the social media platforms. All right. So I have two stories. I thought this was kind of interesting. It's kind of with the wacky news type thing, even though this story is kind of cute. So let's go ahead and get started. So U.S. Army returns birthday cake stolen from Italian girl during World War II 77 years ago. Finally, at least one heinous crime of World War II has been corrected. In any war, you will unfortunately see brutality from all sides, but stealing a little girl's birthday cake, that's just too much, yet it's exactly what U.S. soldiers did in Italy in 1945. While fighting German troops in the village of San Pedro, Unknown American soldiers came across a cake left on a farmhouse's window sill. Undoubtedly hungry and exhausted from combat, the soldiers declared the cake spoils of war and took it with them. But the cake was supposed to be the centerpiece of Mary Mion's 13th birthday celebration on the following day. Needless to say, the young Italian girl's party mood was seriously spoiled. No one still hasn't received any disciplinary action for the crime. And although it's likely that no one ever will, the U.S. Army has finally made amends. Exactly 77 years to date on April 28th, U.S. soldiers presented Mion with a new birthday cake to celebrate her 90th anniversary. At long last, this one mistake of the past has been corrected. A cake lost to war. Let's hop into the Audi brand time machine and travel back to the scene of the crime. It's April. Why do I... I'm starting to think of Golden Girls. I don't know if anybody watches Golden Girls, but it's like um, Sophia Petrillo. She's like, picture it. Sicily. (laughs) 19... (laughs) So picture it. April. 1945. The Second World War in Europe is nearing its end. (laughs) Only two days later, that guy will commit, um, you know, what he does in his Berlin bunker. (laughs) Ending his twisted dream of the thousand year, blah, 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 blah. But for the time being, the war rages on. In northern Italy, city of Vicenza is currently contested. Troops from the 88th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army are engaged in hard fighting with the German counterparts. Over the day, the fighting spills over to San Pietro, a small village some seven miles northeast of Vicenza. During their retreat, the Germans come across the farmhouse where Mary Mion lives with her family. Her mother has baked a cake to celebrate her birthday the next day. She places it on the windowsill to let it cool. But as they hear the machine guns go off near their farm, Mion and her mother rush to the house's attic. They spend the rest of the day and the following night hiding from the fighting. The next morning, the Germans are gone and the American troops, I added the in there, are advancing through San Pietro. But as Mion and her mother descend from the attic, they notice something is missing. Just like the Germans, Mion's birthday cake is gone. The U.S. Army garrison Italy confessed that it was most likely picked up by an American soldier. Although that definitely put a damper on the party, Mion herself said she wasn't too upset. I was surprised, but then I realized the American soldiers had taken it and it made me happy. She told local media... 
according to The Guardian. A wonderful day. Mion herself, despite having her party spoiled, apparently was ready to shrug and forget about the cake. Maybe she figured it was worth sacrificing one cake to have her town freed from the occupation. But somebody at the U.S. garrison didn't forget. And if you received the welcome that U.S. soldiers got in Vicenza, you probably wouldn't either. After the Germans left the town and the Americans entered, the locals were overjoyed. They welcomed their liberators with bottles of wine and fresh loaves of bread. Sounds like a party. But the bread clearly didn't satisfy one unknown soldier to co commemorate the 77th anniversary of the Battle of Vicenza. The U.S. garrison decided it was to atone for his misdeeds. They should have put time. It was time to atone for his misdeeds. On April 28th, the locals of Vicenza and soldiers from the Italian garrison were gathered at a park near the city. During the festivities, Colonel Matthew Gomlack, the commander of the U.S. Army Garrison, Italy, and Sergeant Peter Wallace presented Mion with a new cake in honor of her 90th birthday. A video from the event shows the hundreds strong crowd singing happy birthday to Mion in both English and Italian. Meanwhile, she wipes away tears. Mion planned to share the strawberry and cream cake adorned with, small bas with a small basket of Easter eggs with her family. I will eat the cake with my entire family remembering a wonderful day that I will never forget, she said. All right, so that is one of the stories. Let me go to this other one, which this is really wacky. <laughs> so this is for Canada. <laughs> Canada to prosecute. <laughs> Crimes committed on the moon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, this isn't fake news. This is real. All right. Thought the Mounties couldn't get you in space. Think again. Space is, as you're surely aware, the final frontier. And as it is with any frontier, things can start getting a bit murky when you need to enforce laws. For example, let's say an astronaut committed some kind of crime while traveling on a space shuttle. Under which country's laws should they be tried? Did they even commit a crime since no country can claim space as its jurisdiction? The Canadian government, for its part, has decided to be ahead of the curve in space crime. The country's House of Commons just passed a new law that allows Canada's law enforcement agencies to prosecute crimes committed in space, even on the moon. Of course, the law doesn't apply to every astronaut, cos cosmonaut, taconaut, or other space travelers. But Canadian citizens, at least, can no longer escape the long arm of the law by leaving Earth. Its enforcement would require the criminal astronaut to return to terra firma, or terra firma before prosecution. Though, unless Canadian cops have their own space shuttle that we don't know about, even the moon isn't safe. As is usually the tradition with lawmaking. The Canadian space crime law wasn't its own bill. It was part of a long and admittedly boring Canadian federal budget implementation bill C-19. But once you get past the tax regulation and into the part about space, things get more interesting. The Canadian government enacted the law in the face of globally increasing space travel. In particular, the new law comes ahead of the Artemis II project expected to launch in 2024. This will be the first crewed flight to the moon in more than 50 years. Although the Artemis II mission won't land on the moon, only fly around it, the crew will include one Canadian astronaut. And Canada apparently wants to be ready in case they get up to no good. Based on the new law, any crime a Canadian astronaut might commit will be regarded as if it was committed in Canada. A Canadian crew member who during a space flight commits an act or omission outside Canada that if committed in Canada would constitute an indictable offense is deemed to have committed the act or omission in Canada. 
the law reads. The law covers most of the places an astronaut could reasonably inhabit during a space mission. Neither the International Space Station, the planned Lunar Gateway Space Station, any transportation vessel, or the surface of the moon are off limits. And then it says almost the first space crime. It makes sense for terrestrial authorities to be prepared for crimes in space, with companies like SpaceX rapidly attempting to make space travel more common. It's not a stretch to think one of the cosmic travelers might do something illegal. In fact, we've already had our first space scare of interplanetary crime. In August 2019, a NASA astronaut became embroiled in a legal scandal. According to allegations, astronaut Anne McLean used a computer on the ISS to illegally access the bank account of her ex-wife, Summer Warden. At the time, the case was touted as the first space crime. However, the accusations were revealed to only be a ploy by an embittered spouse. For lying to law enforcement officials, Warden was charged with a federal crime of her own. Despite there actually not being a crime, the possibility was still there. The accusations were realistic enough that they prompted an internal NASA investigation. If anything, they proved that space crime could happen. It just hasn't yet. Okay, had to make sure this was the last paragraph. It says space is the sea, kind of. Despite what you may think, though space isn't a completely lawless void. In fact, it's governed by rules that are similar to how international waters work. Just like the high seas, no governmental authority can claim space as their jurisdiction. But that doesn't mean that there aren't any laws in space. There are five international treaties that govern conduct in legal matters in space. Each of them is managed by the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. Although there are questions about who exactly falls, falls counts as space vessels personnel under the treaties, they have clauses that determine how space crimes are prosecuted. Essentially, spacefaring crooks would be subject to laws of the country in which they hold citizenship. There's also a separate international agreement that applies to the ISS. All these signatory countries operating the space station agreed on a set of rules on how to manage crimes on the ISS. Canada, the European partner states, Japan, Russia, and the United States may exercise criminal jurisdiction over personnel in, in or on any flight element who are their respective nationals. The agreement reads, so it's not like there is no law in space, but Canada is the first country to make sure even moon isn't a safe, even the moon isn't a safe harbor for criminals. So, yeah, that's some of your news. Uh, it's kind of interesting because you think as time goes on, how will this stuff be, in, be enforced? What if people don't come back? Because, you know, as things evolve, you may not have to come back to planet Earth. Right now, you have to come back to planet Earth for obvious reasons. But as stuff evolves, you may not have to come back to planet Earth. And then it's like, okay, so how do you enforce it then? Will will we have space police <laughs> or, or what? But yeah, that's all I got. Let me get going. KIRWKC.com, main podcasting platform. This podcast is carried on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Overcast, Bullhorn, Amazon Music, Audible, and several other podcasting platforms. Please feel free to listen to this podcast on whatever platform is most convenient for you. KIRWKC on all the social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed.